Hello everyone, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Myself Manfred and I have Nishan with me. Uh, we'll be speaking all about reimagining schools on Microsoft Teams for education. And I think we just started a poll with like, have you ever worked on Microsoft Teams for education? It's totally a different uh, Teams platform, different Teams uh, portfolio, I would say. They have different features, not like a Microsoft Teams right now we are joining in. So, Let's see, I'm excited to show the same with uh, Nishan. Uh, I'm an architect in technology and I'm also in Microsoft uh, MVP and MCT, uh, for, uh, as well as you can find me on the social handle with my name and H-E-R-E, Manfred here in every single platform. Easy to reach out to me. Uh, Nishan, over to you. Thanks, Manfred. Hello, everyone. I'm Nishan Shripad. I'm a Microsoft 365 consultant working in around with Microsoft 365 products for platform and everything. I'm an MCT as well. So uh, you can reach out to me on my LinkedIn profile with Nishant hyphen Um First of all, welcome everyone to the Teams Nation 2022. Uh, excited to be here and let's learn a lot about uh, Microsoft Teams of education in this session. So here we start. So it's morning 8 a.m. here. We are starting with. So we are with a coffee cups and talking about education. I think uh, before we prelude with the whole activity, uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, when it came as a platform for us, uh, moving from Skype, it was quite a different one. Uh, there are still companies who were struggling to uh, adopt Microsoft Teams. They were so happy with Skype because it was too, too, too simple. And Teams has. Teams is simple, but again, there are native users who don't use a lot of IT technology and stuff like that. It's hard for them. Uh, but the pandemic was a major stage where Teams and all other global platforms of communication became that famous. Uh, and then with, of course, the education being a major part, Microsoft launched a product as same as Microsoft Teams with a education factor on it. They have a different licensing factor. They have completely a different notion of how it works, how they work. This is specially built for education. This is not used by organizations. The features are totally different than what we have on a normal organization level or right now while you're watching me. Uh, teams as an education work more diversely between students and the educators as well as the organizations, which is the schools. Uh, so that's where the teams come in the picture. I think I think the pandemic phase brought in education because it was very important. People are able to reach out to schools, universities. Uh, they all wanted to adopt technology. They started with normal streaming on YouTube. It was not working well. They, they did a lot of things. I think the teachers, I would say, hats off to them, and uh, they had really struggled. And me and Nishan, when the pandemic started, we have been training teachers all around the world. Uh, how to use Microsoft Teams for education. I think we have covered around 600 to 700 teachers uh, on global meets all around the world from UK, uh, US, India, uh, I think Malaysia, New Zealand, like a lot of people. We have been doing this and it was crazy. You, if you come to those stages, we'll be covering those topics also. Like teachers were like, how do I like control my classroom? Like how there are people who unmute me or mute me and I'm not able to speak and it was havoc. Uh, but I think the Microsoft throughout the whole phase, they started bringing new features, helping the teachers around and we were trying to help the team training them. So I think that that's where this all education started and here we are presenting with you uh, on the Microsoft team for education. Nishan, did I miss something? Yeah, I mean, uh, this was a major shift from uh, during the pandemic, right? That was a one thing and Microsoft actually, I should comment that did a great job doing this because with this problem of schools uh, being remote and people uh, and the remotest places not being able to travel to schools, this product which came in at that point of time tried to actually reimagine the schools, try to do something that what um, I, I really want to comment the idea over there where they thought of, okay, what would I do in a school? How would I use a notebook? How would I uh, do assignments? How would I do tests? All those things was reimagined and put into a product as a template and as a, a new version of Teams so you could do all these things together. And I think this was a great job and a great need that was addressed by Microsoft. Yeah, yeah, true. 
So, so mostly our sessions are going to be demos, uh, but we'll walk you through a little slides and showcase what teams Microsoft Teams for Education is. And we just did a polling of uh, you letting us know who knows about Microsoft Teams for Education. I think 30, 85 percent people know it. Yes, perfect. And 15 percent no. So we're going to cover everything, uh, showcase you the real time questions we had from our teachers, how to do, what to do. Uh, so let's start with the tech, uh, Nishan. Okay. All right, so this is how Microsoft Teams looks like. Of course, uh, they keep on changing uh, every hour, um, the look and feel, but this is a general section of uh, getting started with Microsoft Teams. Again, I uh, would again stress on the part that this Teams is totally different uh, from what we have as part of our normal organization. If you see on the left side, you have Team, the uh, team system normal, then you have assignments and other features. So like, let's keep moving, Nishan. We'll, we'll keep them showing them. So, if you see, this is the channel uh, where we see people, you can have classroom. So, usually, what we have suggested teachers was like make a class, teams as a classroom, and then have the subjects as a channel. Uh, that's where the teachers can see every subject happening and the students don't have to have access to multiple teams. They can be part of just one team and they can just use the channels accordingly. Then came the me space, uh, the app bar, I would say. The left side panel, if you see, that's called the me space, uh, which we again use in organization. It, it makes navigation easy for students. They know where to go uh, and hit what part of it. And then the left rail, as I was explaining, we we go with classroom structure, uh, the classroom as teams, and in the classrooms, or I would say the education sector. So it's not about just subjects, not like English, maths, and stuff. We also make them do co-curricular activities in the same classroom. So what what it helps is like all students can be in one classroom instead of multiple teams and multiple channels and that classroom can store their content, the documents, all the reading materials, all the YouTube links, everything, and their recording also, the session recording, which is more important. People, the best part of students nowadays is they can go back and see what my teacher said the day before. Not like our times, we were like, we had to copy notes from other, we, we missed it. So this was a quite an easy format to go forward. And then we had the vSpace. Uh, vSpace was the top part of the space where uh, you can, like students can post, they can see the notebook. Notebook was like a digital version of a notebook, like where they can store notes and it stays on them or with them throughout their active directory. So they just log in and they can see all their notebooks. Again, we are gonna see everything in detail, uh, point to point. Uh, and then, you had the general section where the navigation will help you to divert from teams uh, to a classroom. It, it it was more diverse, right? You can just keep on doing it. And then you have your assignments, your grades. It keeps on adding the whole features, all for Microsoft Teams. So that was the whole backend. I mean, click on, keep on clicking, I think. Um, this is the general activity people will understand. And uh, then the, Tabs again, we all know that. Best part here was that the teachers were able to assign the assignments very easily without much pressure, and they can even do an exam on the go. Uh, so, as an assignment, they can she can put it on the chat. Uh, she will put it on like Teams channels on the general section. Hey, students, finish an assignment. She'll have an analytical review of who all have completed, who have not. Uh, very easy to even score them. Uh, you can even grade them. Uh, the grading sector is the best part, which I love, uh, because you can actually send those grades directly to your parents, to their parents, and for validation, how you, how their son and daughters are doing. And it was much easier uh, to handle, I would say. Like, so it's all built up like that, and uh, the whole section. Uh, but but in the end, I would say the teams for education did not just brought in the classroom, it brought the educators, uh, like the school level administrators, it brought the teachers and the students all in one platform. So they, early morning, they don't have to go log into YouTube or social handles to see what the teachers have been sending or email. They just log into Teams. Uh, they'll have their content always loaded in there. They'll all have their documents, they'll have their assignments, they'll see the grades in real time. 
uh, among all the students. So quite a way, just log in every morning and there you see everything there. Nishant, over to you. Perfect. And one question that we uh, keep on getting from all the teachers or anybody who is trying to use the Teams for Education for the first time is how do I uh, uh, how do I get this set up? So the first thing is as I mean, if you are a teacher or if you are a student, you have everything set up because there is a different role there, which is the IT system administrator role who will go ahead and set up everything for you. So that is where your initial setup starts and uh, as a teacher or as a student, you would be going through all those things. So uh, we will we'll go through those uh, creating the teams and creating the various uh, a templatized version of your personalized teams over here in the next few slides, but just wanted to bring up that the first discussion that needs to happen with your IT administration. If you are a teacher or if you are uh, 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 if you are a school uh, educator, then you need to understand that you need to first go ahead and discuss how do I want to uh, uh, how do I want to create a structure of this? So with that discussion, I think this helps uh, this. This makes the the whole setup proper and the teachers can log in and use their classroom the way they can because teams as a product gives you a lot of capabilities to do. You can add channels the way you want. So that structurizing the um, school uh, infrastructure is one initial discussion that every school should have before setting this up. Right, and then we go to the next. I think the classroom uh, super easy steps how to create a classroom and uh, uh, a variation where you can see how easy it is to maintain the whole structure as Nishan said. Uh, I, again, uh, it's all different. Every schools and uh, the educators have their way of doing it. We usually main Nishan suggested all our teachers to have classroom structure uh, because it helps them to navigate between classroom for teachers and it helps the, the students to be just in one teams and not in multiple teams because again, like if you can go and get lost in the sea of teams right now in our organizations also, there's so many teams, there's so many channels, it's, it's, it's confusing. So we always go back to that. So Nishan, let's let's go back to the slides and we see how the classrooms are, can be created. Uh, I think we can just couple of jump and we'll be there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here we have. So, so you can create a classroom similar way as a normal organization teams. You can create a team, or you can join a team with a code. But the best part here is when you click on create team, you won't see a normal team structure which you see on an organization level. You're gonna see a uh, classroom, PLCs like professional learning communities as staff or others. So these are the teams type, or I would say the templates when you are gonna create a team. So it always give you, okay, you, are you creating a classroom? Okay, there you go, create a classroom. So it, it has a template where you can add students, you know, the teachers can be the moderators and the educators are of course the admin. Uh, and then the PLC where the professional learning group communities can be used as all activities like sports and stuff like that. Then there's a team for just staff, all the staff, all the teachers can be together, have their leadership call, and with the principal, I would say, not with the organization. And uh, so that's for them. And the others, again, study groups and school activities, the clubs, you can name it, anything, it comes like that. So this is how the whole structure works in uh, while creating a team or a channel. And when you create them, again, similar way of adding members, but again, you can't add hundreds of students in every classroom, it's very hard. Don't worry, there are a number of ways of adding a uh, student. Uh, through Excel sheet, re importing them to Azure, there are a number of ways. And soon uh, the education sector makes it more easier because we know there are going to be thousands of students in a school. Uh, and so it's easy for them to add multiple students. And they can be assigned to multiple classrooms. The teachers can be uh, assigned to multiple classrooms and stuff. Very easy to manage the team also. Uh, on a slide, if you see, like managing team section is much more faster. Uh, you'll be able to see how to manage a team, how to create a classroom team. It's quite a feature of what uh, 
the uh, teams as an education has it uh, as well as the organization level. The only difference is this is built for education. It has their own policy set and all the stagma done that. Nishan, over to you. Okay, so uh, yeah, so creating a team uh, is as simple as creating a classroom. So for example, if you have a structure of, uh, I mean for a one grade to the 10th grade, you can have different classes set for each and every one. And once you have uh, the structure for the classes set up, you could go ahead and create the whole uh, uh, structure within the class, right? For example, each class can have like five subjects within them. So those can become your channels. So that's how you structureize this and you can still use the whole other features of the teams because teams we have been using how you can create posts because it started as a communicator kind of thing, right? So you can still use the post section over here to uh, communicate with your students and uh, uh, the whole group as a whole, right? The whole class can have a whole a discussion on a daily basis on what's happening, what are the posts, what are the things that need to be done, what are the assignments and all those things. But also there are file storage systems over here that you could uh, utilize to have a classroom based file storage and the classroom based communicator over here. That gives the flexibility and the uh, best things that Teams has to offer into a classroom so that you can go ahead and utilize all those features. Here. So now once you have created the class team and once you have created all these channels, so channels are nothing but your internal uh, uh, internal sectors for each and every uh, uh, subcategories that you have. For example, if you create a class called as class 10th, you can have multiple channels within it, maybe English, maybe uh, your second language French, then there is mathematics, science, all these can be channels and each channel can maintain its own conversation and it can have its own classrooms. And again, as it's a Microsoft Teams version, you can directly go ahead and initiate a classroom uh, Teams video call and the class gets started. So it's that simple. Perfect. So. Yeah, we spoke about the files. We spoke about the posts. And this is one interesting topic that comes up again and again on how to manage students. So, Matthew, do you want to take this up? Oh yeah. So, so let, let first I think we what we do here is uh, Teams. Uh, I would I would like to encourage uh, Microsoft Teams for education. Then for two reasons. One is thing again uh, as we were talking about. It's very structured. It's very easy for naively people like us uh, who are in IT. It's very easy. OK, we adopt very quickly, but there are people like like teachers. Trust me when we say it's a real time scenarios. Uh, when we meet them, they'll they are really frustrated and they're like, oh, I hate this technology. I hate this IT, especially in managing students. So uh, one teacher, she asked us a question like, there is there are students while I'm speaking they'll keep on muting me or they'll not allow me to speak. They'll kick me off the meeting. They'll like students. You know how they are and how we were. I think I was a good one. I don't know about Nishan though. So <laughs> so it depends and, and it's, it was a struggle for them. OK, and initially there was nothing like that. Microsoft Teams was launched on organization platform just for education. Uh, so they didn't have much control, but now then slowly and steadily they start having options of muting the students, removing them from the uh, slot. Then now there's a policy which you can set the teachers will never be revoked or kicked off a of meeting. They will always be there. Nobody can revoke them or remove them. So these kind of features, these kind of policies started bringing uh, like and giving powers to the teachers. Like teachers were able to mute uh, students if they're just chit chatting on the channel and teams and disturbing everyone. She can just go in and mute them. Uh, they can block them. She can revoke them. It's it's easy, right? Uh, and the policies came in the picture where some verbal languages are being used. It gets filtered out. It doesn't get posted. <clears throat> and if there are any any content which is non-related to school's education, it will go off. So so Microsoft started with the whole pandemic phase. Uh, 
this the, the, the team as a product has become very powerful for education. Why? First thing is free. Again, I would say it's free. Uh, very easy. Uh, Nishan will walk you through how like after this we're going to do a demo and how everything is in demo and we speak about it. You log into office.com, go to Teams for Education, Office 12 license. The basic one is completely free. You don't pay anything. The whole school can use it for free of course. And, and that's why the whole thing was to Microsoft to have school enable education while this was going on and they are not able to reach out to school. So see, that's how the managing sections have started. And then we have the apps and like channels that that's all technology, but the basic instinct was the student and teachers can be in one place. Nishant, over to you. Perfect. So uh, um, with Microsoft Teams for Education, uh, we've seen how you can use the posts, how you can use the files, how you can uh, manage the students by uh, how it gives capability for the teachers because there are two different roles here. Uh, as an IT administrator, whenever I go in and go ahead and set up this organization, I initially set up the Active Directory in the top where I say, OK, these are my teachers, these are my students. And then I create those groups where I say, OK, I can create those groups as well where I say, OK, these are class 9 students. These are class A students. There is an IT umbrella over the top of this where your IT administrator for the school can manage all these things. So now with all that done and with all the classes created and with all the internal features of your channels where you have the structural setup for like, OK, I have class 9 with these many sessions with I have uh, class 8 with these many classes. Uh, I mean internal subjects. Uh, once once this, all those structures are set up, um, I think then the next question that arises as a school infrastructure or for any educator is how do I manage the notebooks or how do I uh, manage the content for the class? Because we have been through those days where we used to carry notebooks into the school bags and go to school and say, OK, I had a separate notebook for English, one for French and one for my mathematics. But now with everything going remote, there should be a better way of managing your notebooks. And this is not just about uh, some schools that are already having uh, a great set of IT, is hiring an IT company to do all those things. No, this is supposed to be, uh, this is also for the people who are trying to get into the IT world. For example, imagine a school which is um, uh, way in the remotest part of the world where the technology is very scarce. So in those cases as well, this becomes so easier for an IT administrator. So just go over there, set things up. It's as Manpreet said, the A1 licenses are free that can be assigned to your students and your uh, teachers so that you can still go ahead and start those things. And with uh, even though this is a templatized and a different version of Microsoft Teams, this gives you each and every capability that a Microsoft Teams can do. You can start a video meeting, you can communicate with your fellow teachers, and you can communicate with your the fellow students as well. And this creates the whole um, better way of learning, I would say. Like you could go ahead and directly bring in links from all over the internet and work together on that. So that's the beauty of it. So now, with all those things and all the whole structure set up, let's see how the class notebook in Microsoft Teams is. So I'm pretty sure most of them would have, uh, since you have been using Microsoft Office products, uh, Microsoft Word, Microsoft uh, uh, Excel and everything, most of the people are uh, uh, either familiar with OneNote or at least use it once. So the essential questions that we usually ask to any of the teacher or any of the educators or uh, any IT sector for the education department is um, in order to set this up, in order to set this one note or the notebooks for the classes, you need to ask these basic questions. Do you know what is a one note? How do you uh, uh, how do you what do you know? How, I mean, do you know how we can integrate this with your Microsoft Teams for Education? How can you replace your uh, uh, homeworks and real time ass assignments with students and how to keep it interesting? All these are the questions that arise and these are the things that most of the schools are looking for answers to, right? They want to 
actually give homeworks to their students and make sure that they have assignments running. They keep it interesting. All the notebook and all the content on the uh, all the content in the day to day classes are still stored somewhere. And what the value does it bring? It brings a collaboration between everyone. It's nothing like I write on a notebook and lose it. Right? It's still there. Everyone can togetherly work on a digital space. So a school that was using notebooks to do all those things, all the discussions in the classroom, the same thing can happen with a collaborative space within here where everyone can log in and make changes real time so that you can share ideas. You can talk through it while you're making changes, something like a whiteboard. So it helps them uh, manage both their private and public curriculum. So every classes have their curriculum that they have to follow. But since you're on the Internet and since you're on Microsoft Teams for education, you could bring in a lot of apps that helps you do that. For example, for your private uh, curriculum, that may be something like go through plural site videos or maybe uh, use some YouTube videos to uh, share some details to it because nowadays we are doing a lot. Everyone is into the community, so community is growing a lot where people are putting a lot of content about each and everything. So there's a lot of content over there which should be really helpful for the students to uh, bring into their lives. So that private curriculum can be brought into your notebooks and we'll, we'll see this in the demo shortly on how you can bring a lot of things into it. So basically it provides you a centralized digital environment to create your whole to maintain your notebooks to create a robust assignment and grading system and engaging in those feedback loops. So um, I'll just walk over through this uh, basics of how do you set it up, but we clearly see this in the demo. So this is how you set up a class notebook and this comes up in your top app bar as well. And then the whole class note notebook has three sections. You have sections on the left. You have pages, for example, if you have um, if you have this, uh, uh, I mean, I am a teacher only content, right? So if I have uh, uh, a teacher over here and if the section is open, then you can see all the pages that are uh, within that section and that each page can have a lot of things, right? You can write a lot of things, something how you could do in a Microsoft Word. So uh, this is this left navigation space again over here where you have various spaces already set on the notebook. The collaboration space is for everyone. The content library is for people uh, for your. Uh, it's a read only space where you can go ahead and put in a lot of content for your uh, students so that they can download and use this something like your syllabus, your um, table of contents, the things that you want your students to read. Collaboration space is where I can go ahead and work with my students as a teacher on various topics. Then there is I can set up this teacher only because I can't work real time as a teacher with students because students might be seeing what is the assignment I'm preparing. So this gives you an capability where the teachers can go ahead and have their own section where they work on something and then distribute it to various, pages, various students. And the best part is as a teacher, I see all my students and the sections I have created for them. But when a student logs in, he sees only the section that is um, Tactoing, for example, if uh, Amanda comes in over here, Amanda will see that these are the four sections my class has created for me and sees only her content. But as a teacher, the teacher gets the capability to get into each and everything. So that's the beauty of it, right? So once you set up the whole infrastructure of the teachers and students, um, you get the whole uh, idea of how you can uh, uh, how you can utilize this as a student and as a teacher and in the next in the quick demo we will we'll quickly show you how it looks from the student's perspective as well as the teacher's perspective so again yeah this is all i'll run through the slides on of what basically this is and yeah so with that um, uh, yeah, Manpreet, do you have anything to add over here? Uh, because immediately after this, we'll get into the demo uh, in the interest of time. I think, right? I think, yeah, I think we can just go on and open up the teams for education and show them real time. Yeah. 
Yeah, we are almost at uh, 20 minutes away, right? So let's get into the demos and see how this works real time. So uh, first thing, are you able to see my screen with uh, uh, the Teams open? Yep, I see it. Yeah. Awesome. So this is my teacher's view, and as a teacher, um, I can be a teacher to multiple classes because I've been added as a teacher for class zero, class one and class nine. And just for this demo, uh, I quickly created uh, a Teams A1 license yesterday, right? So that I can show this up. So that's how easy it is to do things. Just get into uh, uh, Microsoft Teams for education. It walks you through how you can go ahead and set this up. There is multiple documentations over there on how you set how you can set this up and once you set this up and as a teacher, uh, as an admin, once you set up all those back end active directory teachers and students, you land on the screen as a teacher where you can see all your classrooms that you have. So now if I go into teams and if I want to create and join a team, it is as simple as this. Go ahead and create a team and go ahead and click on class. And let me make this a class for this demo and I can give a description about what this class has to do all those things because I'm setting up a whole class for the whole year and I could still use a team template that was already being used for the past years so I could just bring in those things so that I don't have to create all those contents that I have been using in the past year go in vain right so I can just use from the existing template and create this click on next and that goes ahead and creates your team. So at this step, it lets you add various members into the class. So okay, class 10, let me go like this. You have multiple ways of doing this. So let me go ahead and manage my team. Perfect. So now I can add members over here. And if you see, I can add various students and I can add. Initially, when you uh, uh, set the class itself, it asks you, it gives you the same exact behavior on you can class, you can add your students and teachers, but looks like my internet is not helping me today. So uh, you have multiple ways of coming in over here. You can go to manage teams. And that's how I got over here. And now I can add various students over here. So let me add two students over here that I created. So one is Tom Cruise, and the other one is Brad. So, so we're just, teaching them how to do acting, right, uh, Nisha? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's teach them how to do acting. And just so, for that, my right, teacher so, is going to be Steven Spielberg today. So <laughs> that's perfect. So, so, so everyone, see if you see the way we add members right now on the teams on an organization level is we just use an employee ID, we just add them, they have all equal access. Like you can just make it a member or an owner. But here, the member or slash owner has been replaced by students or teachers. The teachers has more control on the policies. Students has least control on the policies. So that's the difference if you see here. Perfect. And Mampit, I'm making you a co-teacher with Steven Spielberg today so that you can go ahead and teach Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise. Oh, right. perfect. Awesome. So now my class is set and if we go to my teams and my class 10, so all teams over here as a teacher, I go to class 10 um, again. Uh, the first part where we say you can create a conversation over here. I could mention someone from my class saying, OK, I'm saying this is a welcome to class. And Manpreet can go ahead and reply to me. You can use all the basic Teams functionalities of uh, adding attachments, and this conversation goes on and on. You have the file section where you can maintain the whole classroom common files that you want to maintain for the class 10. So now, uh, with this capabilities over here. And again, uh, the best thing over here is as a classroom teacher, when I come over here and create my various channels, right now I'm the general channel. I can create multiple channels over here and say, okay, uh, I want to create a channel called English. I had it 
and the principal now here. And then the English teacher can come over here, start his own conversation, maintain his own conversation, click on meet and the classroom starts. So this is how you can run your day to day classes so that each and day, and this is the structure we were talking about, right? The class then can have multiple subjects and every time a teacher comes in at the particular time, you can go ahead and create a classroom and the students it will notify all your students so that they'll have to join in and that's how your classes run on a day to day basis. So now uh, once you have the channels and the classroom set, then comes the notebook. So this is what we were talking about, right? So now we need to set up the class notebook for this whole class then. And since this is the first time uh, it asks me, say, OK, go ahead and set up a class notebook for one. If I have an existing notebook that I've already prepared for various previous class tens, or if I want to take the template from in class nine, I can do that. But let me create a, a blank notebook of here. And it's so self-explanatory that it tells you what it does. It gives you a collaboration space that we saw where the teacher can edit, the student can edit. So it's for everyone. The collaboration space on your one note is so that you can have a conversation. You can make changes what your teachers adds into ask questions, put on smileys, so many collaboration features. Then there is the content library where you can publish your course materials to students where the teacher can edit, but the student can only view. So this is most of a public space where I can say, OK, these are the classroom notes. These are the links that you need to follow. These are the syllabus for this particular class and all those things. There's also a teacher only section that you can create, which gives you a private space for teachers as we were talking like as a teacher. I need to work on certain things before I give it to the students or before I distribute it to the students. So that's where I go. Ahead. You can have a teacher only section and then there are student notebooks. This is a very important part because every student gets a private space for themselves. The teacher can edit the content of each and every one, but the student can edit his or, his or her own content and can't view others notebook. So this is one thing that we need to. Uh, this is one by default what the class notebook does. Um, it makes sure that you have your own notebooks. It gives the own version of yourself. Uh, your oh, your materials so that you can do the changes so that the other students don't know what homework you're completing or what uh, content you're changing. So that creates the whole uh, uh, the whole infrastructure of how a class notebook is set and how everyone has their own space to do their work and turn it back in. So click on next. These are the basic sections for I have for my class notebook. I can change anything like this, right? I can have various sections over here. I can have a playground for various play activities within the class that I handle. There are various handouts I can do. There are various class notes and all those things. So these are the various sections that I can create and you can create it based on the details. And once you create every student will get all the sections by default. And once you create. Your notebook is going to get ready. So let's just give it a couple of seconds for it to load up. And now you see the class notebook is ready for your class 10th. So what does it do? It's a digital notebook to store everything, link, voice, videos, everything. Student notebooks get created. And if you see, this is what we were talking about. So this is the collaboration space where if I put the FAQ, um, I can write as a teacher over here, I can go ahead and make these changes. But as a student also, I can go ahead and say, OK, I have a question on this and all those things. So the content library, the teacher only section, the content library can have the syllabus. Uh, I mean, this is this is the most important part of your notebook site right? because this helps you run your day to day activities and this structure becomes very important because you use it regularly. And then as a teacher, I see what my students got over here. So since we added two students over here, who is Brad and Tom, so uh, Brad gets everything that we created over here and Tom also gets the same thing. I think I had a login version of. Brad over here. Yeah, so this is I just uh, I logged in into uh, uh, 
the student version of this just to show how this works on a different uh, uh, browser. So if I go to class 10, which I added Brad as a user. So if I go to the class notebook. And you can see how difference, how different this is on the student view. The student gets this uh, read only section of the welcome. Then there is the collaboration space where the student can go ahead and make changes. If you see any other thing that I get into, which I'm not supposed to becomes read only by default. There is the content library, which is also a read only section for everyone to have their syllabus and all those things. And if you see as a student, Brad can see only his section and his pages that are created and right. So that's the beauty of it. So it does everything by default and it gives you the, the capability to work on it. So now as a teacher, um, I can do a lot of things. I can use the capability of Microsoft OneNote to insert various links, various pictures, various audios. I can even, uh, uh, what do you say, create various forms for uh, uh, assignments. I can use all these capabilities. I mean, by default, there are so many things where you could insert file attachments. I could record our audio and all those things. I could also draw things if I have a, a, a system where I can draw directly on these things. You use all these controls over here, various colors, and then there is various things that I could do on the side, like in use the immersive reader, basic capabilities of the OneNote. The important part over here is your class notebook, where as a teacher, I can go ahead and distribute a page. So just to show this how this works, um, in the teacher only section, I can create a new page where I say, this is something called as acting classes. And I say, please be a to, uh, uh, what do you say, a profile of yours, something like that. So now this acting classes and I have created this page. I could go ahead and distribute this page to everyone in my class. I can say, okay, now the whole class of 10th should get this uh, assignment or this page into their notebook. So I could distribute this page. I could also choose this to add to an individual student. For example, if Tom is not good at uh, dancing, then maybe I could create a new uh, assignment for him and just assign it to him. So I could go ahead and do these things, but for now I'll just go ahead and do the distribute page. And it asks me, where do you want to put this? I can put this on my playground that I created for this section. And once I click distribute, this gets distributed to all your class. The whole class gets this. And if you go to Brad's view now, Brad should also have this. And if you go to Tom's view, Tom should also have this. So now as uh, a user or as a student, I go ahead and say, OK, this is my my teacher has asked me to do this. So let me put OK, this is some content that it does. This is my profile and all those things. And once this is done and this is saved by the user, right? So once this is done and once they make these changes on a particular timeline, so the teacher can go ahead and review the students work each and every once. So now I created a page. I distributed to everyone. I can also distribute a section of this where I say, OK, uh, uh, I not just the handout, not just a page. I want to do a separate uh, section altogether. I want to create a section with multiple pages over it, something like uh, an um, acting whole uh, drama class and I create multiple pages with multiple content into it and I can go ahead and give various work onto there. Just add some details, ask them to do those things. And if you do those things as a section, it gets added similar to this and each and every student gets the same thing. So now I can. There is also an option that you can copy your content from 
uh, one library to another. You are a teacher, you work for various classes. You can use this content library to move from one notebook to another notebook. So that gives you the capability of creating the content in one place and moving it across multiple classrooms. Because uh, as a teacher, the flexibility to manage your work from one place to another, right? For example, if I have a teacher only class created, so in, while creating the classroom, we saw that not just the classrooms, you can also have create staff content, right? The staff classes. So if you create and if you have sections over there and you want to copy content, you could copy this to various classroom works. And now if I want to do a, a review student work, and this is where if I give them a homework on a regular basis. There are assignments to do that. We'll get into that quickly, but you can also uh, get into the student's class notebook, for example, the playground, and go to acting classes, the pages that I just created, and see what everyone is doing. If I see this, I can see that Brad just added test content. I can go ahead and give him a feedback, maybe insert an emoji over here saying that's nice. Uh, 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 I think I added this in the wrong place, but I can go ahead and add the emojis, do a lot of things over here, right? Like maybe add this over here, say, okay, this is nice. Uh, give them feedback on an audio. I can record a video saying that, okay, this is what you have to do. I can uh, give them pictures, emojis, stickers, whatever I want to do. And then I can also lock this space so that they know that I'm working on this. And then I give my feedback onto that and they can see the, they can collaborate with me and I can work with each and every student to make sure that their content is proper. And if you see Tom has not created anything into this, so I can go ahead and ask him why it's not completed. So I have the capability to go ahead and review each and every one's work that I have been expecting them to do. So this is how your class notebooks can be worked on. And again, the other important feature is you just don't have to use the browser. You can open this in your desktop app. Um, Microsoft Office gives you the capability to utilize Microsoft OneNote and Microsoft OneNote uh, can be uh, launched directly from here, which is connected to your class team and you could work from there as well. So that's about the class notebooks and on the, on the timeline, we're low on the timeline so let's talk about grading and assignment i think that's the last topic we wanted to cover yeah perfect yeah I, we are almost 10 minutes away yeah so uh, uh, let's get into the assignment so now i created the class notebook i can also create an assignment an assignment is a simple way where you can go ahead and say okay let me create a test acting assignment for the class I can add various instructions. This is something uh, test, test, test. I could add all the details that I want to add. I could even attach a notebook where I say, OK, this is what it has to do and all those things. And this is where for each and every assignment as a teacher, I can create a rubric. A rubric is nothing but uh, adding uh, uh, a schema of how your marks might look like. For example, if I um, say, OK, this is acting class one. This is my description and this is my uh, uh, grading criteria. You need to act. You need to dance and you need to do actions. What is the criteria? I can write, OK, this is my criteria. You need to act well. What is the criteria for an excellent one? What is the criteria for good and all those things? And I can set up the points. If I set this points up, this is this takes 50 percent. Of the weightage, this takes 25 and this takes 25. So this is how I can uh, set up the whole thing. Um, and this gives me all the points so I can go ahead and attach this. And once you have the rubrics, each and every teacher student can go and see OK, what the teacher is expecting and then they can work based on that. I can give the date due, the time even on when the uh, uh, assignment has to be turned back in 
and then I can go ahead and say assign. So now I just created an acting assignment which is due by tomorrow and the student should be able to see it. And if you see here, teams already did saying that OK, that was a assignment that was already created. So now if I go back to somebody like Brad, who is part of the class, he sees OK, there was an assignment that was added and this is where it is, right? For example, he gets a notification over here, but also in the assignment section, you can see that okay, there is something assigned to me already 400 points. This is my work. I can go ahead and create a new Word document or something like this, and I can attach my work based on the instructions or the details that the teacher has put in. And once I do that, just put in something. Added a test document and the student has the capability to turn it in. So once you turn it in, you see Microsoft is already doing some things to make this as exciting. Once you did a turn in, you can see it gives you various emojis to say that you already done that. It's congratulating you. And then that's where you can go to your class. Assignment and if you see this, I can see that Tom Cruise has not turned in, but Brad Pitt has already done it. And I can go over here, see what the content that he was he has put in. It's a blank content. I can say, OK, this is the feedback. Next time put content onto this, but still I'm going to give you a mark, something like 50 marks out of 100 based on the grading system that I have, based on the rubric that I've already designed. So if I return this, then the student should get the details of the uh, uh, assignment and the assignment should be turned back to him. And this also goes back to the other student where he has the deadline to complete these things. One was completed, I re uh, turned in and it was returned back by the teacher. You can see who was returned, uh, all those things. You can see what was returned and all those things for such refreshers. And then uh, you can wait for the other com students to complete this as well. So that's about the assignments and this is the grading system, right? So as a teacher, I can see the all in all um, uh, view of how the grades are done for each and every assignments. Assignments are like your test. This was one thing where Brad got 50, Tom got 75 or something like that. But then as I keep on adding various um, various assignments to them, something like midterm examinations, preliminary examinations, final examinations, have them complete this within time. And once that is done, I can go ahead and finally have a whole structure of all the grades over here. I can export this to Excel, um, make sure that I can analyze the data, uh, create a healthy competition on who comes first, who comes second, and manage the whole grading system from here. And that should let you grade the students and utilize the capabilities of Microsoft Teams to do that. So that's about your assignments, how you can utilize it, how you can create new ones, how you can turn things in, and how you can see the grading system you can export to Excel and how you can do those things. So these things are fairly, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, fairly easy to play around with it. So once as a teacher or once as a student, if you go ahead and start playing with it, this is much more things are self-explanatory and then uh, there is always, uh, there is always, I mean, uh, uh, content on Microsoft and uh, if there are any questions, then you can reach out to uh, uh, either Manpreet or me and we can uh, help you set these things up. Brilliant. Thank you very much, guys, for, for that in-depth um, look at using Microsoft Teams for education.